Okay, welcome back. Uh, today we're going to do a little bit more assembly programming and we're going to look at creating functions. And uh, you know, if we're fast enough, maybe we'll do a little bit more. Uh, what we'll do is you can see I've already created a folder 02 for this uh, second um, uh, the second video. And what the first thing we're going to do is we're going to copy from our first video. So we're going to go into 01 and we're going to copy our main.asm file and we're going to copy it to here. And so now we have a copy of the main.asm file and we're going to start modifying this. And what we're going to do is we're going to turn these two pieces of code into functions. And so functions are pretty easy. Uh, you, they have a label at the top and then uh, ultimately there's a return at the bottom. And the way that this works is when you call a function, your uh, current address gets pushed onto the stack and then the, uh, well, and then the instruction pointer gets loaded with the address of the function that you're calling. And, and so then when the next instruction is run by the processor, well, that instruction will be the function instruction. And then at the end of the function, there's a return instruction, which what that does is that, that, uh, that pops that value off the stack back into the instruction pointer. So that way you can return to where you were. So let's, it might make a little bit more sense if we actually created this. So let's go ahead and do, uh, let's copy this out. So we're going to have a function, let's call it read console, something like that. And what we're going to do is essentially copy this, all of this code, and we're going to paste it in here. And we're going to have, uh, it's good to kind of comment your code since assembly code is very low level. So we're going to write exactly what this read console function does. So we're going to say read console uh, reads um, input from stood in into a buffer. And so we're going to say inputs uh, we're going to say inputs rax is going to be the buffer. So we're going to get we're going to pass in a buffer and then actually it'll be a buffer address and rdi will be the buffer uh, let's uh, uh, buffer size and then for the outputs we're gonna have rax which is going to have the uh, number of bytes read negative one if error Okay, so that should be pretty good. The first thing that we're going to want to do is actually move, uh, so these are our inputs, and if you notice, uh, to do the system call for sysread, rex and rdi have to be set to sysread and uh, standard in. And in order to do that, and notice the we're using rdx, or rax and rdi for variables that we pass in. So we're going to have to shuffle these, uh, shuffle these things around and we're going to have to, so we're going to have to take the buffer and then actually move it into RSI because that's what the sys, uh, the syscall read needs and the buffer size needs to go into RDX. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to move, uh, RSI. Uh, so we're going to move the buffer address, which is in RAX. Set buffer address, um, and we'll do move um, rdx with rdi, so buffer size. So now we don't need these anymore. Read from standard in. Um, we can do a system call, and then of course at the very end we'll need a return so we can return back from whence we came. So let's just take this and try this function out. So we're going to go back up to the top of our main function and we're going to 
uh, we have to set up our variables, right? So we've got to move uh, into REX the buffer, and we're going to move into RDI the size of the buffer, which will be 80. And then we can do a call of read console. And so that will actually call our function um, because it has the address of our function here. So let's test this out. Let's see if it works. And we're going to use phasm main.asm and it compiles. And you can see we have a main function here. So now it's waiting for us to create some input. So let's say hello there. And it worked. So let's go back and see if we can convert our write function uh, or our write block of code into a function. So what we'll do is we'll actually copy, we'll copy our read function. And if you look at the system call table, syswrite, um, with the exception of the RAX uh, uh, value, RDI, RSI, and RDX all have the same values, or they should have the same values. So we can actually just copy the read console and change it to write console. So we'll do this, and this will be it reads uh, writes writes output. Uh, from buffer, actually from buffer to stood out. So there we go. Right console. So now we can actually change these things. And so instead of using Zor, we can use move and Rax needs to be one. And uh, let's see, we're going to do mov. This needs to be one as well. So now we've got that. In fact, let's see. Okay, so now what this should do is this should actually write to the console. So then all we've got to do up here is do the same sort of thing that we did before. Now, there's an interesting thing is that uh, read console will actually return in REX the number of bytes that it read in. So since we know the number of bytes that we read in, we don't have to use 80 anymore. We can tell it to write exactly the number of bytes that we read in. So let's go ahead and do that. So RDI will now have this REX value, um, num bytes to write. And then we can, now we can set RAX with the buffer that we want to have. So this will be buffer address. So we're going to pass those two uh, arguments into our function. So we're going to call uh, write console. And we can get rid of this now. So now you can see our 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 main function is a little bit cleaner, and we now have reusable pieces. So let's go ahead and test this. We should get an echo from this. So let's do phasm main.asm, and it compiles. So then if we run main, it's waiting for our input, and we'll say hi there. And it was able to echo that back out to us. So that's pretty good. I think covering the concept of functions is actually good enough. I want to try to keep the videos fairly short. The next video will probably be a bit longer because uh, we're going to actually do a dynamic memory allocation, uh, well, memory allocation uh, for buffers. So instead of having a statically assigned buffer that we have here, we're going to learn how to allocate buffers. We're going to learn how to read from files. And uh, that'll be really interesting. And um, that might end up being a little bit longer, but uh, I think it'll be pretty good. So thanks for watching.